Good evening guys and welcome to another video where I try to teach you a little bit more about the world of video game making. Now today we will be looking at environmental storytelling and how game developers incorporate narrative and stories into the environment of their games. Now, if you want to follow up on what I say in this video and do some more reading, I strongly recommend the What Happened Here GDC talk by Matthias Wurch and Harvey Smith, which I will link to down in the description, and that is also where I got a lot of the information for this video when looking it up and researching, so I highly recommend you look it up if you want to learn more about the subject. This video will purposefully not be going very much in depth, only trying to give you a general overall idea of how environmental storytelling works, what its purpose is, and how it's usually incorporated into games that you can find out there, or games that you might be making yourself. But with that out of the way, grab your notebook, get ready to write some stories, and let's go. Now first of all, why do environmental storytelling at all? I mean, when we think of providing a narrative, in most cases the first things that come to your mind might be journal entries, it might be NPC conversations, it might be listening to holotapes, and sure, that is one way to provide and feed the story to the player. However, the main focus of a game is to keep a player engaged. If you can feed them information without directly shoving it down their throat, then that's a win both for the developer and for the player enjoying the game. The idea behind environmental storytelling is that by simply adjusting the environments and changing the way your levels are laid out slash your setting is made, you can already provide a lot of narrative context and information about the world and its happenings to the player, while at the same time making them feel good for essentially figuring it out themselves. Now to get started on this, the first thing you need to consider are your areas and their layout. As far as utilizing environmental storytelling in this sense, the two main things that you can do are communicate affordance and player's identity, and also providing the narrative context for your world. In terms of communicating affordance and player identity, when you walk through a part of a game, it should give you the idea that that world has a purpose, it is a part of a larger structure. In something like a medical facility, for example, this could be a specialized ward or a specialized wing. In terms of enforcing player identity, if you think to something like Portal, that game purposefully puts you into a fully white, clean and almost somewhat alien looking facility, really making you feel vulnerable, exposed, and trapped like a rat in a maze. In terms of giving narrative context, the way your levels and the props in them are laid out can explain several questions and give a general idea to the player about several things in this world, such as for example, what the history of the place is, what the mood of the place is, how the inhabitants are doing, what are the living conditions, what was the purpose of it, what is the purpose now, and etc. Another great tip for this is that you can always incorporate structures that players recognize from real life, such as bar stools, tables, and bottles to create the setting of a bar or a restaurant to help with both immersion and explaining what the original purpose of the place was. But now, the important thing here is not to get too stuck trying to make everything absolutely clear for the player. At some point, the player themselves need to make the leap and connect the dots to create the narrative. The beauty of doing environmental storytelling is that all the information is not right there for the player to just consume and move on, instead it might sometimes take a bit of a closer look or a bit of thinking about what's around the player to give an understanding of what that place is and what the overall context is. In this sense, even if some players end up identifying a certain situation slightly differently, having somewhat varying interpretations, this doesn't necessarily have to be bad. Well, of course, unless it's completely on the opposite spectrum of what you intended for the game to be. This is compelling because the game invites more investment and immersion from the player, whilst creating what you could call an indirect gameplay engagement in the form of connecting clues and hints. It also gives the player the feeling of solving the situation on their own rather than having their hand held and have it be force-fed to them. On the same note, a useful tool that can be used for introducing mechanics or introducing gameplay segments is something called telegraphing. In a sense, this is the utilization of the currently available information to prepare the player for an upcoming section of gameplay. Common examples for video games can be something like an electrocuted body on a fence, someone crushed in a puzzle that you have to solve, or perhaps a blood trail leading into a room with an enemy encounter inside. 
In some other games, this can also be used to introduce the functionality of weapons. Maybe you see an NPC use a weapon and fail at it, then you pick it up and you already have a somewhat solid understanding of how that weapon works. This can even be taken a step further, and for example, if the player experiences a certain repeated behavior, for example, an alien isolation, the alien crawling out of the vents, they will immediately begin to view all the vents in that game as potential danger and they will try to move around them even if there is no direct feedback that the alien might be in there. This can once again provide more narrative context for any environmental storytelling situation that you build. If you for example had a chair with a bunch of blood on it with a vent above, you can already establish what happened there and the probability that the alien is somewhere in the general area. Alright, so we have the general overview, but now let's get down to the nitty gritty. How do we actually make this happen? Well, the most important starting point is establishing a chain of events. In most cases, this is about creating a cause and effect scenario. When creating a scene, this should be focused on the events that got it to that stage in the first place. If you are making a game about the post-apocalyptic world, and you are trying to display how the moment when people realize the apocalypse is upon them looked like, you might perhaps be exploring an office building and see a bunch of mugs knocked over, see some hastily stacked or fallen over papers, some chairs that were pushed over, and even without a single word, this already gives an idea to the player of how that place looked in that moment of time. And do remember that even a single prop that is somewhat out of place or offset from the usual can completely transform a scene. Of course, here it's important to make this chain of events be compelling for the player. In the best case scenario, they should want themselves to explore the scene and learn what happened in the place. While the chain of events itself should paint a larger picture, its individual points should most likely be compelling on their own. This also ties you very well into the aspect of referencing the overarching story that you have going on. In fact, a good quote from the GDC talk I mentioned at the start would be that every anonymous environmental storytelling moment wastes the opportunity to say something about the game. For example, a dead body strewn in the middle of a hallway with nothing attached to them might be somewhat disturbing to your player, but most likely they will just cough it off and continue moving on, especially if it's something they've already seen before. However, if you utilize what your game is about and reference the overarching narrative that's been going on, this will keep the player constantly reminded of that and it will help you build the overarching story of your game. In general, your premise will spawn the event and the event will remind the player of the premise. Here, of course, it's also important to mention that you should try to avoid disconnects. A very common thing for this can be a chain of events that involves something that the player cannot do, or something that just feels completely out of place with the setting and the narrative that's been given so far. And while this can be used for a shock value, one has to be extremely careful with this, because for example, trying to create stories about characters that the player has no emotional attachment to them will mostly fall flat on its face and will not have the desired effect that was originally intended. Now, just to slowly top this video off, there are a few extra tools that you can use to even make environmental storytelling dynamic and hence include the player in what's happening a bit more. Now, there is a ton of way to do this, but the two that I personally think work the best are interactability, essentially having the player be able to interact with objects in the world, push them over, and somewhat leave their mark on the world immediately draws them in and makes them feel a lot more involved in what's happening. As a good example of this, if your chain of events scenario involves a person failing a puzzle, and then you have the player repeat some of the steps that that person took but in the correct order, it immediately creates more immersion and makes them feel drawn in into what's happening. On that same note, if your game includes any sort of narration, whether it be indirect through holotapes or recordings or diary notes or direct with something like the Stanley Parable, having the narrator reference the player's actions, the locations the player is in, or even directly reference the player character, can be an interesting tool to draw the player in and make them feel like they are the person setting the story, not just someone observing it. So, let's quickly recap. Environmental storytelling is, in general, a tool that can help with efficiently incorporating narratives into a game, keeping the player immersed and curious, as well as maintaining a coherent and believable world. The most important points for environmental storytelling are communicating affordance and player identity effectively, providing the narrative context for what's happening to the player, 
allowing the player to make their own interpretation of what's happening in the world, establishing a solid and compelling chain of events for the area, which can and most likely should call back to the overarching narrative story, and finally avoiding disconnects and making sure that whatever the narrative or the situations you are designing are, they feel like they belong in a world and not like something that is completely out there, because it might quickly lead to player disinterest and take them out of the moment. But anyways, with that, I want to finish this video off. I hope you guys enjoyed. As already mentioned, there's a ton of sources online that go way more in depth than I did here for the sake of time. And my first recommendation would be that GDC talk, which I'm leaving a link to down in the description below. If you like the video, consider leaving a like, commenting or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. And hey, maybe leave a comment telling me what your favorite part of environmental storytelling in any game out there that you've played was and how it got you immersed or took you out of the situation that you were in. I want to wish you a bit of rest off today, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.